is about the art of storytelling. And that's why we, we require total silence and no serving during the time because the people that are speaking tonight are brave because it's hard to stand up here and tell a story in five minutes. So for the next one, how many hands up do I have? You see, there's always no one. But I always get five storytellers, don't you worry. So the first storyteller tonight is, do we need an introduction? <laughs> so I always, um, we have a little WhatsApp group with the storytellers and I always say, how would you like me to introduce you? And this is how Richard said. Richard Ardern, local Pam Golding, did we not be surprised? I was brought up in Warmer and Penis. Sorry, he said P-E-ness, but it's Penis here. I was fortunate to marry a successful artist, Jane. His parents built in St. Francis in 1970, so we could say he's a local. We have three sons. We had them in Cape Town, where I tried very hard at paddling and squash. And we moved here in 2005. And then I was prepared to listen to the next part, but there was nothing forthcoming. So give it up for your first speaker tonight. This is Richard Ardern with the story Against All Odds. Just go like this. Okay, so geez, there's so many people here. I mean, have you guys got anything better to do? Uh, please. And 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 tonight is the reverse order of ability, I think. So the worst is first, and by the time Sandy's second, then it gets better and better. So um, another beautiful day in St. Francis. I couldn't enjoy it at all because I was so petrified about this evening. So, um, but it's wonderful to be here at the brewery, Vance and Linky's beautiful brewery, and I'm getting bonus points for all my branding, I'm sure. I'll just use my phone here, so I just need to make a call. No, I'm too close. Sandy, come and do that again, because I quite enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, um, can you hear me at the back if I stand down? Charlie? Can you hear me? Okay. I like it more reverberating. So I should have been here in May, but I got COVID again, and so I wasn't here. And then I was going to be here in June, and then I went to my son's wedding, our son's wedding, but doesn't. And so I wasn't here in June. Uh, but Sandy is quite a persuasive and persistent, and so here I am in July. Um, and I've gone blank completely. <laughs> So I was going to give the same talk that I prepared for, for May, uh, which was uh, my pivotal moment. And I was there until this morning when I was watching the surf quite small at Hewlett's. And I thought, Sandy will not only be persuasive and persistent, she might be pissed off if I talk about my pivotal moment. So I thought I'd better find something that fits this against all odds. Huh. So I thought, cheap it's against all odds, it's something heroic. I've done nothing heroic. I'm, I'm kind of mediocre at heroic stuff, you know. So, oh, 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 anyway, so I've came up with an idea, it's pretty lame, but anyway, so I've got, I've got something, um, but it's, it's quite lame, but anyway, it's the best I've got, so here we go. So I've got five minutes, it's very difficult to give us a, a, a small, short talk. That's a long So, my friends laugh at me because I've never paddled PE to East London, uh, which is something that uh, maybe anybody here put your hand up if you've done that because that might spoil my evening hey, please like <laughs> so um so the background to this is that in the 1990s in, in cape town and durban surf ski paddling grew like crazy due to one guy in south africa you might have heard of him billy harker and he somehow got surf ski paddling out of life saving going like crazy uh, because he made it social you know people don't want to just do stuff they want to drink and socialize so he grew padding like crazy and i got swept up in this um, for, for for about 10 years in cape town before we moved here okay. <laughs> awkward silence awkward silence so i got swept up in this and i was quite poor but i kind of you know got better but i'm not brave and and i slowly got better and then you get kind of talked into stuff which is out of your comfort zone like paddling 
um, the Cape Boy Challenge, which I did twice, it was terrifying. I'm, I'm, I was so nervous. I mean, it was like shaking. Uh, but you're at least there, you're staying close to the coastline, you know. So, I don't know, you can't swim in that water anyway. So, even if it's like a kilometer, you know, it's too far to swim. But anyway, so I did that. And then there was talk of a paddle across False Bay. And I said, never, ever, ever. In the middle of False Bay, 25 kilometers, it's just impossible. It's 55 kilometers across False Bay. In the middle, you know, it's, this is no, definitely not. Definitely not. But my friend, Mark Preen, said, no, he's got a, a, a boat which will go with us with two engines right next to us the whole way. So I said, oh, so, okay, well, I, that sounds maybe. Okay, so got to Hunclip on a windy, sort of wintry morning. Hunclip, you know, the southeastern corner of... of it sounds like I'm brave, but I'm like terrified. <laughs> but yeah, no, no. <laughs> so, um, so I'm terrified. And anyway, so we, we've got, there are about 25 paddlers, and most of them shoot off much faster than us. So the three of us at the back uh, with our boat next to us, we paddling now, and it's windy southeast, which is behind us, great, and it's quite a big swell. So we're now heading off um, and paddling along, making reasonable progress. How long have I got to about three minutes? So, we now, <laughs> so we're going along. Oh, shit. And now, um, the boat now, you know, I think you kind of know what's coming. So the boat guy says, no, this is too slow and boring. They're going to go forward. They're right next to us. They're going to be chatting. They go forward to, to see the faster panthers because we're so slow and boring. So they go, but the visibility is not good. So they go forward. And then we lose sight of them quickly because the visibility is only 200 meters. I don't know, but not good. So we lose sight of them. And the minutes become hours, and they never come back to us. So we're now in the middle of that Bloody False Bay with like 25 kilometers that way, 25 kilometers that way. The wind drops, which is bad news, because <laughs> now it's even further. And, and, and the one guy, the three of us, the one guy is not well tired. I'm, I'm too petrified to admit to being tired. Uh, or anything, our food's low and the boat's not coming back and Fishhook is like uh, so far away and it's not getting closer, there's just the mountains there but there's no apparent kind of progress, you know, flip. Anyway, so I want to say it was a dark place but that's being really dramatic, it wasn't a dark place but it was certainly nerve-wracking and, and, and the odds were against us. Uh, anyway, no boat and we got no modern flares and stuff and we had flares, we had flares but we didn't have all the modern apps that one has. Um, so I'm standing here tonight, so obviously, uh, you know, nothing terrible happened to any of us. Um, we got there against all odds, um, and, um, and now, you see, when my friends mock me about not paddling PD to East London, um, I can say, when did you paddle across Forest Bay? <laughs> against all odds.